Hello and welcome back to my channel and part three of my tour of the lesser known tourist sites around England. And today I want to start in London, which as I'm speaking to you is absolutely baking hot, so it's a good time to get out there. Now, I live in West London, which is a huge, great big suburbia, heading towards Heathrow Airport with all its warehouses and all its hotels. Not the kind of place where you'd expect to find a stately home, but there are four really beautiful stately homes in the West London area. Take Boston Manor. It even has a tube stop named after it on the Piccadilly line. Walk down from the uh, Piccadilly line, you're walking through suburbia, normal houses, driveways, you know, people washing their cars, and suddenly you come across this Jacobean house built in 1623, an incredible survival. It's been going through an extraordinary restoration over the last five years. It's only been open one day a week. Now it's open six days a week, and it's free. You can go in free. They've done this strange thing. I think it's most famous for its ballroom, but what they've done is, as the house has been changed over the years, each of the rooms is now in a different period, and they've restored it to the period of the room, so they haven't all restored the, same, the house to the same period all the way through. It's a sort of mishmash of architectural styles and fashions. Not quite sure how that works. I've not visited it yet, but it's uh, of interest. Now, if you go one more stop on the Piccadilly line, you come to Osterley. Now, Osterley is a jewel. You come out of Osterley tube station and you are on this really noisy main road, this great big road going west towards Heathrow. And you think, where the hell am I? And you walk left down this road, traffic everywhere, houses either side. Then you come to this brown sign that says Osterley Park. You turn left, go down this road. Now, on your way down this road, you'll pass a little second-hand bookshop on your left. Please go in and give them some business. Um, it's a lovely, gorgeous little shop, and I just want to give them some business. You walk on from that shop, and across the road from you, you see a low brick wall with trees behind it. You go through an opening in the wall, and suddenly it's like you're in a secret garden. There's this avenue of trees ahead of you, and on either side opening out of fields with cows and corn and horses. You walk down the avenue, you come to a little ornamental lake with loads of geese and ducks, and then you walk on into this green lawn space and you look to your left and there is Osterley House, this huge, beautiful, stately home. It was built by the Childs family who were bankers. Osterley is a rather look, odd looking house. It looks like a bank. It's, it's a very strange house but it's very beautifully preserved, and it's one of the great treasure houses of the National Trust. I think it's one of the top 25 treasure houses because of the original Robert Adam architecture. There's some rooms that were put aside for royal visits, and they're still pretty much as they were, and they're very beautiful. Um, it has its own Tudor stable block, which they've turned into a little restaurant cafe, which is very nice to visit. And then there's the gardens, and I think the gardens is the secret of Osterley. They're quite expensive to go into. But if you go in, there's a lovely walled garden area. But the secret joy of Osterley is its flower meadow. What they've done is there's this giant meadow behind the house that they've left wild for wildflowers with a tiny path sneaking through it. Very few people go and you can walk down this path and it's just a beautiful photo opportunity. Behind you, you've got the house and in front of you, just this little sneaking path through all these beautiful wildflowers with trees all around. You're under the flight path of Heathrow, but it's so beautiful. Highly recommend it. Down the road in Brentford, of all places, yes, at the home of Brentford football team, you know, a pretty standard suburb of London, is Sion House. This is another uh, treasure house, another house full of Robert Adam uh, architecture and styling and design. It looks like a sort of toy castle from the outside. It's a rather odd-looking place, but it's very beautiful inside. Lots of wonderful history, very interesting place. With, when I last went, there was an aquarium shop in the grounds. I'm not quite sure why. And then if you go down uh, to the river at Richmond, which is a lovely part of uh, London, some great restaurants, lovely bar, uh, pubs and bars by the riverside, very busy there. You walk along the river um, east, um, and it, you, you're, soon, you're soon walking in fields. Uh, last time I went, last week, there was a guy cutting the fields in the old style with three shire horses and a little plough. So you walk along the river and you go to some trees and then what happens is 
you're walking along the trees, suddenly the trees thin out, and you look to your left, and there is Ham House, an old Jacobean manor from 1610, an incredible survival, beautifully preserved, owned by the National Trust, and well worth a visit with great ornamental gardens. It's an absolutely stunning house. A few mentions for outside London. Back where I came from, up in Midlands, in Leicestershire, is Beaver Castle, which is spelt Belvoir, as in beautiful view, B-E-L-V-O-I-R. I like this thing about um, how the British pronounce French words. So that, for example, this word that you can see on your screen now, how do you pronounce that? Of course, Beecham's. You didn't think it was pronounced Beauchamp's, did you? You idiot. What about this one? You know, the French for beautiful place. Bewley. Of course it's pronounced Bewley. You didn't think it was pronounced Bolia, did you? You idiot. What about this one? Yes, Worcester. Not Worcester. You know, I was in London once. I was walking down Regent Street. And these American tourists came up to me and they said, Hey, do you know where Leicester Square is? And I was thinking, oh, with all my amazing knowledge of London, and Leicester Square, that must be one of those unusual squares. Uh, oh, I was like this. And they were look, sort of looking at me and they said, it's really famous, but no one seems to know where it is. And then it clicked, and I was like, oh, Leicester Square. Come on, guys, of course it's pronounced Leicester. So a little bit of advice to Americans travelling in Britain, by the way. If you see this word, don't say you're going to Edinburgh. Don't say that. You sound like a knob. It's Edinburgh, right? And if you see this word, don't say Birmingham. It's Birmingham. You know, just drop it, Birmingham. So a bit of advice there. It's like, you know, if I went to America and said, hey, where's Arkansas? It's Arkansas, you limey ass wipe. Yeah, and what's this word that for Americans? Is this Des Moines? How's it pronounced? I like to think it's pronounced demons. Anyway, so some little advice there for you. But Beaver Castle is lovely. It's still one of these stately homes that's actually lived in by the aristocratic family. It's the, it's the Dukes of Rutland, which is a, the tiniest of English counties, which is a few miles south of Beaver Castle. Um, and it's a beautiful castle. The actual castle part of it, it, there was a castle there from the 1066, but now it's a mock castle. It was built in the 19th century, but it's still well worth a visit. Over in Norfolk in East Anglia, there are two really beautiful Georgian manors right next to each other almost. Hokum Hall, great name, and um, Houghton Hall, which was the home of Sir Horace Walpole, the British Prime Minister. Both of them are remarkable for their art collections. Um, Houghton Hall used to have one of the greatest art collections in Britain. Most of it was sold to the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg. But I was lucky enough, in 2013, they did a deal with the Hermitage. And the Hermitage sent back the paintings that they'd bought and they were displayed in the house where they'd originally been. It was an exhibition. It was absolutely beautiful. It was so good. Unfortunately, they've gone back to Russia now. Um, but that was a, well worth a visit. Also worth going, now down in the West Country, is Corf Castle. This is a lovely old ruin of a castle. And it's well worth visiting because you can access it by steam train. And that's a lovely journey. You can do it from the coast to the coast. I can't remember the name of the coastal town nearby, but you can go on steam train. Corf Castle is set up on a hill and you can see it as you're approaching on the steam train. There's a lovely little tourist village at the bottom where you can buy things like fudge and clotted cream. And it's just so atmospheric and so English. Highly recommended. The other way from London, going southeast, something a bit different that I wanted to tell you about. Dungeness. Now, this is for the more adventurous tourist, someone who wants something a bit different. Basically, it's a spit of land right on the corner of England. And you can, again, you can access it by train, this time a miniature railway. That's the best way to access it from the local town. And you go down, it's, it's like a scrubland. It's all sort of stony, pebbly beach and scrubland. And right at the end of it is a great big nuclear power station. And next to that is a little lighthouse and there's a cafe. And then if you go to the left... All along this pebble beach are fishermen's huts. But these fishermen's huts have been converted as sort of little um, playhouses almost for the rich and the wealthy. And among them you'll find Derek Jarman's house. Derek Jarman was a British filmmaker. And he bought one of these huts and he converted it. And most famously, he made a garden for it, which is made up of pieces of 
flotsam and jetsam, debris picked up on the shore. It's very interesting, actually. It's very, you know, it's well worth visiting. Dungeness has got a very special atmosphere about it. It shouldn't do, but it's kind of fascinating. There's nowhere else in England like it, and I really love it. Coming back to London, if you're in London and you're a bit stuck for things to do, there are two walks you can do. One is called the Capital Ring. Now, this actually goes through London, and it goes through parks and green spaces. So you go through um, Hampstead Heath, you go past the Olympic Stadium, uh, you go through Richmond, as I just mentioned. And it's a very beautiful little path. It's a very nice way of discovering the, the, the nicer areas of London and also London history. I also really like the London Loop. Now, this is an outer walk right on the outskirts, just inside the M25, the massive ring road around London. It's not so much a picturesque walk, though there are some parts of it are lovely. You're going through green spaces, which are actually part of London. Some of them are open fields. You're in open countryside. It's extraordinary. You do walk through a lot of golf courses, and occasionally you hit places like Barnet or Kingston, these kind of great big suburban hubs, and you have to walk through suburbia for a while and that's a bit of an arse ache I must admit but then suddenly you're in green countryside again and suddenly you're in the estuary and you're in the marshes it's it's amazing it's a very odd walk and it gives you an idea of how London has expanded and the history of London you come across odd things like Tudor hunting lodges that are just sort of out in a field somewhere it's fascinating I also came across a little observatory a tiny little observatory out in the middle of nowhere so if you're in London or if you're visiting London, that's well worth a try. So those are some little places for you to try. I'm kind of running out of places, but if there's more interest in this, I, I can rustle up some other places I've been to in England I like very much. Let me know if there's any other places that you would recommend. And if you like my content, please like and subscribe.